So last week I made a video about the AMD HD 7850 and I think we all were like, what the heck? I had no idea that this graphics card could still kick it in 2019. So today we're gonna compare it with two other budget graphics cards, the GTX 750 Ti and the GTX 660 Ti. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna to be benchmarking and comparing three budget graphics cards, the HD 7850, the GTX 750 Ti, and the GTX 660 Ti to see how they're doing here in early 2019. And if you're new here and you wanna see more benchmarking or PC building videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell, that way you never miss an episode. But before we get into it, let me quickly introduce the sponsor of today's video, Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is a 13 week class for all of you aspiring iOS and web developers out there. Their 13 week class focuses on providing you only the skills that you actually need to go out there and start your new career in coding. They don't waste time with a filler curriculum like at a traditional college. They also feature student housing at no extra cost, a variety of different classes, including UX design and QA testing. And most importantly, all of this is available at an affordable price. Head on down to that first link in the description to learn more if you're interested in getting that quick boost you need to start your new career in coding and design. All right, so before getting straight into the actual benchmarks, let's quickly introduce what specific cards we're working with. Then we'll talk about current market price and then go over the testing rig for today. If you have no interest in all of that, which I know is some of you because you're always leaving hate in the comment section, feel free to skip to this time in the video where the benchmarks actually begin. You're welcome. Anyways, the first card up is the AMD HD 7850, which I literally just made a video on, and this specific model is from PowerColor and is rocking two gigabytes of GDDR5. It's also rocking a core clock of 860 megahertz and has a TDP of 130 watts. The specific GTX 750 Ti that we're testing today is from Asus and this one is also rocking 2 gigabytes of GDDR5. It has a core clock of 1072 megahertz and has a TDP of 150 watts. And finally the GTX 660 Ti that we have here today is the MSI Twin Frozer Edition which yet again is rocking 2 gigabytes of GDDR5. We definitely have an even playing field when it comes to VRAM. This card is also packing a core clock of 1019 megahertz and a TDP of 175 watts. For the purpose of today's video I'm going to keep all three graphics cards at stock speed and not overclock them. I say this in almost every benchmarking video, but I just don't like overclocking graphics cards in these style of video because I could hit the silicone lottery on this one and have the exact opposite happen on this one. So I just don't like overclocking in this situation. As far as market price goes, the only way of measuring this, in my opinion, is to scroll through the completed and sold auctions on eBay and then see what people have recently paid for them. For measuring, I averaged out the last 10 sold auctions for each of these graphics cards and I did it for the specific graphics cards. So not just like GTX 750 Ti's in general, but this specific Asus 2 gigabyte GTX 750 Ti. With that being said, the market price average of the two gigabyte power color HD 7850 at the time of this video is sitting at $47. The average of the Asus 750 Ti was higher than I expected at $62. And the MSI GTX 660 Ti averaged the exact same at $62 as well. Once again, keep in mind that these are the prices for these specific model of cards we're benchmarking. So you you can most likely find better deals if you get a different brand of a 750 Ti, for example. And finally, before getting into the benchmarking, here we have our trusty Dell Optiplex, which is going to be our testing rig for the day because this is a system that you would actually use with one of these graphics cards. It's rocking an i5-3470 clocked at 3.6 gigahertz, eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, a 500 watt EVGA power supply, and the games are installed on a one terabyte Seagate 7200 RPM hard drive. With all that important intro info about these graphics cards out of the way, it's now time for probably the reason reason why you clicked on this video, the benchmarks. The first game up on this and every benchmarking run these days was Fortnite. And here I ran these cards at 1080p with medium settings and the resolution scale at 100%. As you can see, the 750 Ti and 660 Ti are performing significantly better than the 7850 with the 660 Ti winning by a small margin. The next game up was Rainbow Six Siege with its built-in benchmarking tool in 1080p and low settings. And this one was a bit different than Fortnite as the HD 7850 actually performed better than the 750 Ti, but also with the 660 Ti definitely taking the victory by a pretty large gap. Counter-Strike Global Offensive followed. Keep in mind this one is more of a CPU intensive game, but here we got the same results as Siege as the 7850 beat the 750 Ti with the 660 Ti still coming in at first place. Obviously all of these are very playable frame rates though, and I wouldn't say the difference means that much here. Sticking with the easier to run games first, Rocket League followed and in 1080p and high quality settings, yet again we got the same type of results as before. I think we're starting to see a trend here if I do say so myself. The next game up was 
Grand Theft Auto V and in 1080p and normal settings, the tides turned back to how they were with Fortnite as the 660 Ti was on top, but the 750 Ti actually beat out the 7850 for this title. PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds was up next and here in 1080p and low settings, I probably should have cranked this one down to 720p for these cards by the way. The 7850 and 750 Ti did the exact same, although the 750 Ti was indeed smoother if you look at that 1% low and the 660 Ti averaged almost right at that 60 FPS mark. Getting into the newer and tougher to run games, Battlefield 5 was up next and in 1080p and low settings, all three cards produced playable frame rates in my opinion, but the 660 Ti was yet again on top, no questions asked. Next up, I fired away at the Shadow of the Tomb Raider built-in benchmarking tool and in 720p and low settings with DirectX 12 turned off, all three of these cards struggled as this is definitely a tough game to run with lower end graphics cards. And finally, the last game of my benchmarking run was the Assassin's Creed Odyssey built-in benchmarking tool, also a tough one to run, but here in 720p and low settings, the 750 Ti and 660 Ti actually got the same exact result even down to the 1% lows and the 7850 remained straggling behind. So there you have it. As you can see, we can pick a clear cut winner from these three graphics cards, the GTX 660 Ti, but that doesn't always mean this is the best option for your build. If you're only looking for the absolute best performance between these three cards, then yeah, the 660 Ti is the winner, but keep in mind that this is a generation older than the 750 Ti, so it won't be supported for as long. Nvidia recently cut driver support for their 4 and 500 series cards, so that only means the 600 series cards are coming up next, so that's just something to be aware of, and also, this thing consumes a lot of power. Well, that wraps up my comparison of the HD 7850, GTX 750 Ti, and GTX 660 Ti. Now, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet, and definitely hit the subscribe button because later this week, I'm doing an updated setup slash desk tour. You don't want to miss that video.